and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Gamification, episode number nine! This is Yu Kai Chow, gamification pioneer and speaker, here to integrate you into the global and inevitable movement of gamification. In this episode, we will talk about the second core drive, development and accomplishment. Development accomplishment is the basic drive when people sense some progress that they are moving forward, they're leveling up, they're actively accumulating points to get closer and closer to the goal. When you're in kindergarten and your teacher gives you a golden star sticker, when you perform well, that's an example of development accomplishment. Development accomplishment is seen in all types of implementations like airline miles, loyalty programs where it's buy 10 get one free, and a lot of other interesting stuff. In gaming, there is a high sense of development and accomplishment. <clears throat> they break your challenges into stages, right? One enemy at a time, too. You kill an enemy, easy enemy, and it gets a little harder. Stage one, stage one boss, next stage. If a game were just one big stage where you play for 20 hours and then you beat the game, it is not as exciting and not as fun. Development and accomplishment is one of the most common core drives that gamifiers use in the industry. And this is what points, badges, and leaderboards, the PBLs, try to capture upon. You know, you gain points, you're having progress, you're developing, you are earning a badge and achievement symbols, and also you are rising up the ranks in your leaderboard. So, and that's also why progress bars are effective too. Development and accomplishment is the easiest core drive to design for, and that's why you see it everywhere. But it goes beyond that. Instead of just throwing points, badges, and leaderboards, you have to understand how it completely motivates people, and how to pace things correctly, how to actually post accomplishments in the right way, and build up a learning curve where you can obtain mastery. This core drive is also extremely relevant with motivating your team. What do you think about that, Steve? And a lot of times, you know, when you have to walk a thousand miles and you take the first step, it looks like a long ways. And it really helps if there's someone there saying, well, we're one step closer. You know, the, the goal definitely exists. It's not just a mirage out there. You got a good point. You're pretty smart. Cool guy, Steve. When people are getting so close to their goals, it becomes very motivating for them to complete it. You know, if you're 90% there, you are... <laughs> Whoa! Who are you? I come in peace, mother Girl Scout cookies! My favorite! There's the Junior Stain Fit Badge! Girl Scout Juniors learn what is needed to get fit and stay that way by eating uh, chocolate peanut butter cookies. Yeah. And there's also the Gold Award! The Girl Scout Gold Award is the highest award a Girl Scout can earn! Woohoo! And then finally, there's the Ambassador Good Credit Financial Literacy Badge! Development and accomplishment at its finest! <laughs> what you want to remember is that points and badges are not supposed to force you to like something. They're supposed to make to keep track of what you already care about. Badges are supposed to emphasize what you're already proud of, not you know, make you feel proud of something that you don't care about. More importantly, to feel accomplished, they have to actually overcome a challenge. And this is where a lot of companies uh, err on. Basically, they make things so easy to get points or to level up that there's no challenge and people don't care. For instance, if you go to a site and click on a button, and it says, Ta -da! congratulations, you just got your first button click badge. Click here to see all the ba other badges you can earn. You're going to be like, dude, this is lame. What else do they have? Like a scrolling down badge, a click on the about us page badge, a you know, stay on a page for three minutes badge. You're just like, this is lame. You're not going to care about it. In the long term, you're rewarding users for doing nothing or for just doing like really stupid little things. They can tell, oh, well, you're just rewarding me points because you can, uh, you want me to click on ads or something. But if they, if you do something that you feel like you uniquely earned 
that you actually deserve, that you're proud of, and they give you a badge, then that's interesting. They're like, oh, great. I'm happy that I earned this badge, and let's see what other interesting badges that I can earn. Gamification of urinating. You got to shoot the bug and get points. The key about development and accomplishment is that the actions and the rewards need to be aligned with each other. If you give people a huge reward for a little action, it's not fun, it's kind of stupid. If you give people a little reward after a huge action, like a huge accomplishment, that's not interesting either. So you gotta connect with the user mind, showing them, hey, I did something little, so I got something little, and that makes sense. I, got a lo I did a lot, and then, and I got something huge. Leaderboards are only useful when the user can see how to reach his target. The thing with leaderboards is that a lot of companies do it wrong because they set it up in a way that actually demotivates people instead of motivating people to do stuff. A lot of sites post a leaderboard where they just show the top 10 uh, scores on the site. And oftentimes those top 10 scores are so far above the, the user that the user doesn't even want to try, there's no hope. An example of that is when you use Foursquare, you check in at your local Starbucks, and you look at the mayor, and you see that the mayor has 2,000 check-ins, and you have like three. You're not gonna be playing this game, there's no hope. You're just like, well, whatever. It's not motivating. It actually demoralizes and demotivates people to continue further, further. So you always want to include things that are actionable, that you want to install what we call a urgent optimism, which means that if people are optimistic, as in they feel like they can accomplish the task, and it's urgent, they, but they have to act now. They have to do something now in order to fulfill a task or get to a win state. And so usually how you do that is that you want to put where the user's at and the few, the few users above the user and the few users below the user. So the user has to be in the middle because all that matters for the user is that, hey, they want to beat the next guy. They want to beat Surfer Dude 24, who's only 24 head points ahead of them. And, you know, Frog Girl 19 used to be below the user, and now she's above him. So he's like, I need to cruise my score and beat her again. So that makes motivates people, and that makes things more actionable and doable. I want to get some water. Uh-oh, this one's for handicap. Never mind. Uh-oh, this one's for handicap. Never mind. So, where can I get water? Development accomplishment is also one of the core drives most used in the onboarding process. That's the phase when you want people to feel smart, to learn the tools, to get one step at a time and feel accomplished. But there are other examples of development accomplishment in strong play. For instance, the startup keep is built based on the premise of development accomplishment at the discovery phase. Again, discovery phase is how people discover their tool and want to try it. They run on the premise that people will value something more if they earned it instead of freely given it. So when players are playing a game and they kill this, this boss, they're like, congratulations, you just beat the stage. Here's a 20% you know, coupon from this restaurant. Redeem it now. And so that's, again, people feel accomplished and that's why they will take action into doing something. The Nike Plus Fuel Ban is another great example of development and accomplishment. The Nike Fuel Ban is a good example of motivating people to exercise more. When I set my goal at 3,000 and I'm 20, at 2,800, um, 10 p.m. at night, I'm like, dude, I don't have 200 more. I better do some exercise to get it to 3,000. So it gives you that little extra push to make you exercise a little bit more before you go to bed. Another useful thing to know about development accomplishment is that if you are applying a leveling up system where they get to a tier and the next tier next, and it gets more and more difficult, each new tier or level should only be about 20 to 40 percent more difficult than the last stage because if it is too much more difficult than last stage, than, uh, than the last win state, then people feel like, oh, this, you know, I have to do too much more work than the one before and it's not worth it. Um, and obviously you don't want it to be the exact same because then you know you could quickly um, 
allow users to finish everything they need to do and get to the end game, where you want to keep people scaffolding for as long as possible. This concludes the beginner's guide to gamification! Episode number nine. <laughs> That's all, folks! <laughs>